Reggie, why did he want to do this march to the sea? He was safely ensconced in Atlanta. He had achieved his objective, but he decided he wanted to march to the sea. One of the reasons was he wanted to directly involve the civilian population of Georgia in the war. His feeling was is that it was the civilians were as much at fault uh, for the, the war between the states as were the generals or the politicians. As he did in the Atlanta campaign when he destroyed the Western and Atlantic Railroad and later the other railroads coming into Atlanta from the south, he wanted to destroy the transportation system in central Georgia. Uh, so the Georgia Central Railroad, the Georgia Railroad, uh, the Macon Augusta Railroad, there was a whole bunch of them, but he wanted to destroy them all. He wanted to destroy the morale of the Confederacy. He wanted to deal a blow to the Confederacy that they would never recover from. And I think you can make a strong case that he did that, that the South never, uh, never recovered from that blow. This one was not just a strategy, but a pretty important tactic. Since he was going to live off the land for five weeks, he desperately needed to link up with the uh, Union Navy in the sea. That was the march to the sea part, because they had brought all these supplies down from uh, Pennsylvania and New York that were sitting there waiting for Sherman's army off uh, in the Atlantic Ocean. So it was very important that he take Savannah, if for no other reason to have access to uh, the supply ships uh, in uh, the Union Navy. He also wanted to defy, divide Confederate forces in Georgia. Um, at the time of Sherman's march, John Bell Hood was gone. John Bell Hood has take, taken his army all the way up into Tennessee. So there's not really much of a, a an organized force to resist Sherman. But if the South had, could probably have mustered about 30,000 troops, maybe 35,000, uh, to fight against Sherman, but Sherman's goal was to keep them divided so that they, they couldn't attack him en masse. They probably had about 10,000 in Macon, and 10,000 in Savannah, 10,000 in Augusta, and he says to himself, well, wait a second, if I make it unclear what my real objective is, then they're not going to be able to pull any of those troops out and meet me in the field. And that's exactly what he did. He kept them guessing as to whether Macon, Augusta, or Savannah was his final uh, goal. And this wonderful quote here from the Richmond Examiner, uh, Sherman actually saw this in a newspaper when he was sitting in the governor's mansion in Milledgeville during the march. And uh, it says, our information from Georgia in regard to Sherman is meager. All we know certainly is that he left Atlanta about one week ago with a force generally estimated at 30,000 men and that he was moving in the direction of Macon. Uh, so uh, this was published in uh, Southern newspapers that Sherman's objective was Macon. Uh, then there's an addendum to it, like uh, you watch CNN or Fox News, and they'll have breaking news. There was kind of a breaking news uh, addendum. Well, now it seemed like he was heading toward Augusta, and they were really confused. Uh, and, and that's what he wanted them to think. He, he wanted to keep them guessing. But all the time, his, uh, his goal, of course, was Savannah from the very beginning of the campaign, which we'll get to. So I hope I have you all tingling with anticipation to get to the actual march with all these little fragments I left up in the air. Now, results. I am not, I will repeat, I am not making a value judgment. I am not talking about the means used. I'm simply saying Sherman had a list of objectives. Did he meet his objectives? The short answer is yes. A longer answer. He destroyed all the railroads in central Georgia. They did the whole Sherman necktie thing. Uh, you build a bonfire, you put the center of the rails in the center of the fire, then you twist them around uh, uh, trees. Uh, sometimes they would twist them so it said uh, US, and then they'd leave the, the US on the ground, which of course could refer either to the United States but could also refer to Ulysses, Ulysses S. Grant, either one, which would be annoying to, to some. Uh, he definitely dealt a blow to the morale of the Confederacy, and it never did recover. Now, you could say, well, heck, the war is about over at this point anyway. Sherman takes Savannah, uh, like Grant takes Petersburg. I mean, the war is over. But I think the will to fight went out of the deep south after Sherman's march. He certainly split the Confederate forces still left in Georgia. This is amazing. It took him four months to get from Ringgold and take Atlanta. Four months. And that's what? 100 miles? He 
takes Savannah in five weeks, that's 275 <coughs> miles, and he has no supply line. It's really an astonishing victory. Sherman himself estimated that damage done to the state of Georgia was 100 million. So 100 million in Civil War terms would certainly be multiple billions of dollars. 